After the homily, the choir will be singing a response, repeating it several times. We ask that you join in. Good morning and welcome to the Cathedral of Our Lady of Victory as we celebrate the first Sunday of Advent. The processional hymn is number 226, Wake, O Wake, and Sleep No Longer, number 226. The Church joyfully welcomes today those who will be received into the order of catechumens. 
In the months to come, they will prepare for their initiation into the Christian faith by baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist. We also greet those who are already one with us by baptism, who now wish to complete their Christian initiation through confirmation and Eucharist and be received into the full communion with the Catholic Church. What is your name? And what do you ask of God's church? Guidance. What is your name? Charisma. What do you ask of God's church? Guidance. What is your name? Charisma. What do you ask of God's church? Guidance. What is your name? Charisma. What do you ask of God's church? Guidance. What is your name? Charisma. What do you ask of God's church? What is your name? Andrea. What do you ask of God's church? Guidance. What is your name? Guidance. What do you ask of God's church? God gives light to everyone who comes into this world. Though unseen, he reveals himself through the works of his hand so that all people may learn to give thanks to their creator. You have followed God's light, and the way of the gospel now lies open before you. Set your feet firmly on that path and acknowledge the living God who truly speaks to everyone. Walk in the light of Christ and learn to trust in his wisdom. Commit yourselves daily to his care so that you may come to believe in him with all your heart. This is the way of faith along with which Christ will lead you in love toward eternal life. Are you prepared to begin this journey today under the guidance of Christ? Sponsors, you now present these catechumens and candidates to us. Are you and all who are gathered here with us ready to help these catechumens and candidates find and follow Christ? We are. Father of mercy, we thank you for these, your servants. You have sought and summoned them in many ways, and they have turned to seek you. You have called them today, and they have answered in our presence. We praise you, Lord, and we bless you. Central hymn is number 226. Wait, oh wait, and sleep no longer. Number 226. <laughs>
dear friends, to admit you as catechumens and candidates, I now mark you with the sign of the cross, with the sign of Christ's cross, and I call upon your catechists and sponsors to do the same. The whole community welcomes you with love and stands ready to help you. Candidates and catechumens, receive the sign of the cross on your forehead. It is Christ himself who now strengthens you with this sign of his love. Learn to know and follow him. Receive the sign of the cross on your ears that you may hear the voice of God. Candidates and catechumens, receive the sign of the cross on your eyes that you may see the glory of God. Receive the sign of the cross on your lips that you may respond to the word of God. Receive the sign of the cross over your heart that Christ may dwell there by faith. Receive the sign of the cross on your shoulders that you may bear the gentle yoke of Christ. Christ will be your light. Learn to know and follow him. Receive the sign of the cross on your hands that Christ may be known in the work which you do. Receive the sign of the cross on your feet that you may walk in the way of Christ. Christ will be your light. Learn to know and follow me. I sign you with the sign of eternal life in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, by the cross and resurrection of your Son, you have given life to your people. Your servants have received the sign of the cross. Make them living proof of its saving power. And Father, help them to persevere in the footsteps of Christ. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A 
A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and Judah. In those days, in that time, I will raise up for David a just shoot. He shall do what is right and just in the land. In those days, Judah shall be safe and Jerusalem shall dwell secure. This is what they call her, the Lord our justice. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we have for you, so as to strengthen your hearts, to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his holy ones. Amen. Finally, brothers and sisters, we earnestly ask and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you have received from us how you should conduct yourselves to please God, and as you are conducting yourselves, you do so even more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on earth nations will be in dismay, perplexed by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will die of fright in anticipation of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But when these signs begin to happen, stand erect and raise your heads because your redemption is at hand. Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of daily life, and that day catch you by surprise like a trap. For that day will assault everyone who lives on the face of the earth. Be vigilant at all times and pray that you have the strength to escape the tribulations that are imminent and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. The day after Thanksgiving, I did what I've only done two times in my adult life. I went shopping. I was feeling rather brave that day. I recall it well. There was only one store I was interested in going into because they had some items that I wanted. So I braved the anticipation of what I was going to face, and I said, I'm going to go. And I walked in, and it wasn't that bad, really. People were kind, and they welcomed me, and no one was pushing and shoving. I got my items. I found them right away of what I wanted to purchase. And then it began. When I asked, where's the line? They said, about two aisles away. <laughs> So the line was this way, and then this way, and then this way, and then there was me. <laughs> I had two choices. I could put the items back and go home, which I thought about doing, or I could wait in that line. I decided to do the latter. I said, I'm going to wait. But I knew what it was going to take. The weight was already there. That was the acceptance of what is. It was all about the attitude that I was going to have while I was waiting. That was the lesson. So I said, if I'm going to stand in this long line for probably an hour, and I'm just going to grow in frustration, then I might as well leave right now. But if I'm going to go with the mindset that I'm going to be patient, I'm going to go to that place within myself to find some inner calm and wait in that kind of way, then I'll do okay. I chose to, to wait, but with the right attitude. And it made all the difference in the world. I began to pay attention to other people. I began to look at, at what people were going through and even strike up a conversation or two. And I enjoyed seeing, though I felt sorry for them, but I prayed for the parents who were in the long lines, but also with children under the age of five. <laughs> so it gave me an opportunity to pray for parents, as I do every day. And about an hour later, it was time. I finally made it. And that feeling, and you know it, this is it, I did it. I didn't get mad, I didn't knock anything over, I didn't say anything that I shouldn't have said. I made it. And the clerk was so kind, 
as if she just came on to the shift, though she had been there for hours, I'm sure, customer after customer, and the exchange was done. And I felt rather good, and I realized when I was leaving the, the store, that is a lesson of, in life. It's not about whether or not we're going to wait. It's always about how we are going to wait. That's what Advent is about. Advent's about knowing this is a time of waiting. It's a time of anticipation, not just in the planning of another Christmas that will come, but the anticipation that it is the Lord Jesus in his incarnation who has already come, and we await the fullness of his love revealed to us at the end of time. Jesus tells us how we are to wait in today's gospel from St. Luke, that we are to wait in that anticipation, not filled with anxiety, not overcome with drunkenness, not come overcome with carousing, but to stand erect with our heads facing the reality that our salvation is at hand. Jesus says, this is how you are to wait, not in fright, not in overwhelming fear. He says some people at the end of time will even die of fright when they see the signs that will come. He says it can't be that way for you. You have to stand ready to welcome the Son of Man when he returns. St. Paul says the same in his letter to the Thessalonians that we read today. He says to us, may the Lord increase make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all. Good thoughts for us in these four weeks of Advent. We know that the busyness and the crowdedness and the loudness of what is outside is just the opposite of what the church is calling us to reflect upon in this time of Advent. It doesn't mean that we can ignore what is, but we can choose how to be patient. We can choose what our reaction is going to be to everything and to everyone that we encounter over the next four weeks in this time of Advent. May I make a few suggestions for us in how we can use this season. The first is to pray more than we normally do are to pray if we haven't done so in a while. Pray every day. Take that opportunity to connect with Jesus. It will calm us. It will give us what we need so that we can truly celebrate again the incarnation of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For some people, it might include daily, pray, daily attendance at Mass. For others, it means that between now and Christmas, they are going to participate in the sacrament of reconciliation. It means each day their prayer will be looking within, examining their conscience, seeing what they need to keep working on, thanking God for his gifts and his blessings and the grace that he bestows upon us, but taking time to pray. Another suggestion would be to practice intentional silence, which means during these weeks of Advent, let's try to be quiet a little, to find that sense of calm and to find the presence of Jesus in silence. As I said, I know the world out there is very noisy, but we can go within ourselves, even in the midst of the noise and the busyness, and find that quiet place where we can encounter the Lord. That sense of quiet and silence will bring great calm upon us. It will help us to see and to hear what we need to see and hear in our lives. And lastly, perhaps we can be a little bit more compassionate and kind to each other, a little bit more patient with our spouse and our children try to exemplify the love of Christ within us to the stranger that we meet, the person who's behind the counter and we're their you know, thousandth customer that day. 
that we can be more kind and more compassionate so we can do as Paul says in his letter to the Thessalonians, that the love of Christ will truly abound and increase within us. Advent gives us a great opportunity to do so. And this time in which we keep adding to our to-do list, we know that we have a lot of opportunities to practice patience, to practice calmness, to practice compassion and love. This is a beautiful season that we enter into, this time of Advent. Let's don't lose it. Let's don't lose sight of what it is about. Advent means coming, celebrating the coming of Christ and the incarnation, but celebrating Christ when he returns again. And we will never be ready when he returns unless we begin today living in that anticipation, living within our lives as a people celebrating the incarnation, but of knowing that God gives us all of these opportunities and graces to grow in faith, so that when he comes again, we will not die of fright. We will say, come, Lord Jesus, come. I invite our catechumens and candidates to come forward. My dear friends, this community now sends you forth to reflect more deeply upon the Word of God which you have shared with us today. Be assured of our loving support and prayers for you. We all look forward to the day when you will share fully in the Lord's table. In faith, let us profess what we believe as followers of Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We rejoice in God's love in this time of Advent, and we ask that the Lord help us by answering our prayers. For the whole church, may we prepare our hearts for the coming of Christ into our lives especially during this holy season of Advent, we pray to the Lord. Lord For leaders of countries around the world, may they realize that the destiny of nations is in God's control. We pray to the Lord. Lord For our Jewish sisters and brothers, as they begin the celebration of Hanukkah at sundown tonight, may they draw closer to God we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For our catechumens and candidates, may they undertake with generous hearts and souls 
whatever God may ask of them, we pray to the Lord. For our parish community, may we witness to our catechumens and candidates compelling signs of unity, support, and general lo generous love. We pray to the Lord. Lord For the families of Rosalinda Coronado and Juan Salas, may they be consoled by the Lord in their grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord For all the faithful departed, and for the repose of the soul of Edmundito Florencito Sanchez and Richard and Annabel Canable, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord for the needs listed in our parish intention book and for those we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord we are grateful, loving God, for this time of preparation. We live each day in anticipation of the fullness of your coming again. So help us to know, your, to know patience, to know calm, to be still in these weeks so that we can learn better how we can deepen our faith and welcome you at the end of time. We ask, Father, that you answer these prayers according to your will through Christ our Lord. The hymn for the presentation of the gifts is number 209, Emmanuel, number 209.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Except we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he assumed in his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. 
together with Francis, our Pope, and Brendan, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. We dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
The communion hymn is number 260, Make of Our Hands a Throne, number 260. <laughs>
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. I invite you to take home with you a copy of our bulletin. It has not only the weekly events of our parish, but also it has in it the Advent and the Christmas schedule, the Masses, the Sacrament of Reconciliation, a lot of opportunities to truly make this a, a faith-filled time of the year. So the schedule will help to keep track of everything that's going on. Also, you will find in the bulletin an insert with an envelope attached. It's this time of the year in which we ask for added help to meet our goal for the diocesan services appeal, which is the bishop's appeal. This is how the bishop runs the diocese. Every parish is assessed a goal. Our goal is more than $156,000, and as today we're still $88,000 shy of our goal. 172 parishioners have given to the bishop's appeal, but we have over 2,700 parishioners in our parish, which means thousands of people have not given anything to help our bishop run the diocese. So we have major renovations going on here in the church, as you know, because of Hurricane Harvey. We're doing our best to get everything done and get everything back to the beauty of this church, but we can't do it alone. So if we have to budget $88,000 to send to the diocese, it's going to be very difficult. So if everyone just gave something, we could actually reach our goal. So we made it very convenient. You can just put in a donation into the envelope, drop it into the collection plate, or mail it, or drop it by the office. And the bishop, I know, would appreciate it very much. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended. The processional hymn is number 319, The King Shall Come, number 319.